Hey, if you've watched my previous comparison video where we took a look at all the popular password managers head to head against each other, then you'd already know that I kind of crown one password and also BitTyson as the overall winners. So in this video, I thought I'd go a little bit deeper into one in particular, and that is with one password families to like really get into the guts of this offering and talk through my likes and dislikes and, and also finish off with a special discount, which will be in the description below if you just want that. This isn't a sponsored video. They, they haven't paid me to say any of this, but just very selfishly, number one, I genuinely do like this product. And number two, my last video was by far one of my best performing here on this channel. So, um, so if you are looking for what motive I have to make this video, well, that's basically it. If this is your first time here, then hi, my name is Pete. And on this channel, you can find videos around tech, business, finance, basically just anything I'm into. So um, so if you are looking for more reviews like this one, then please subscribe. So 1Password is one of many family offerings when it comes to password managers. And getting straight into this, I will say that personally, I found 1Password to be one of the best out there. I tested quite a few of them last year from like LastPass, Keeper, Dashlane, and a few others. And if you wanna watch some of that, then uh, click up here and down below. So first up, what is the 1Password family subscription? Well, it's basically just like the standard 1Password subscription, but does let up to five people store and share all of their own passwords at just a fraction of the cost of what it would cost to you know, have five separate personal subscriptions. Those five people don't even have to officially be in the same household. It could be you know, friends or roommates or, or housemates, or perhaps, yes, family. Uh, you'll be able to share logins with individuals or groups of individuals within that subscription. And if there are more than five of you, then you can just add additional users for like a, I think it's like $1 extra per month. The way 1Password works with families is with vaults. So you have a personal vault, which stores your own passwords. And then you have a shared vault, which is created by default when you sign up for a subscription. And by default, everybody in your family will just have access to these passwords in these vaults. But you can also go ahead and create other vaults that you want to separate maybe your data or share with only specific people. And you can then move passwords between them like effortlessly, super clean, easy, quick, just, just no issues there whatsoever. When it comes down to device support, it basically runs on just everything. I mean, Mac, Windows, Linux, Chrome, iPhone, Android. And there are also browser plugins for Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and uh, Microsoft Edge. Oh, it's actually Microsoft Edge now. I've had a bit of an upgrade. But one thing that's tripped me up in the past is that there are two kinds of browser plugins. There is the 1Password browser extension, which comes with like Safari. And then there is 1Password X, which works in like all of the others. And basically, go with 1Password X. It's so much more functionality in there. You can do a lot more with it. So my recommendation is outside of Safari, go with 1Password X. Onto the features. And some of the features that I love about this are that you can show passwords in large type, which basically pops the password up out of the password manager and it floats it on top of the other window so it doesn't get lost. And it also gives you the number of the characters underneath. You know, when you're on the phone to like a bank and it says like, can you really read out character three and seven from your password? Well, this makes it super easy to quickly pick out character three and seven. And I absolutely love this. It's not something I've come across with many other apps, maybe it any other apps. You do also get one gig of encrypted cloud storage for your documents, which again, you can share, but to be honest, I don't personally use this as I share that within my own Google and Microsoft cloud subscriptions. Speaking of which, video that compares all of those here and here. But this storage is geared more towards, say, I don't know, if you wanna store a copy of like your driving license or your passport, maybe bank, finance or like investment paperwork. You can use 1Password as the 2FA generator for those websites that need 2FA access. And with 1Password family subscription, you can also share that 2FA access, which is really unique actually, but it makes it really, really easy and quick and really, really super fast to log into a website, even with 2FA, because it just automatically fills in that 2FA code. Then in terms of the data you can store in 1Password, you can store like payments and card details, kind of much like Safari does, but because 1Password sits outside of Safari, this means you can easily get your you know, 1Password app on your phone if you've got your card pin, and it will also also fill card details in other browsers as well. And then lastly, in features, you can also save pretty much any data that you want to in 1Password. Again, this is why I love it so much. Custom fields are just a case of hitting like edit, typing in the field name and entering basically whatever you want to store. You can also add tags, notes, link passwords to others, and upload attachments, just all of the things. When it does come to security, it's basically the same as personal plans, but with 1Password, you have a feature called Watchtower, which basically just looks for leaked passwords online and, and warns you if they have been leaked, but it also prompts you if you're reusing passwords on various different websites or if you're using any weak passwords, which again, all good reminders to make sure that you're being a bit more secure and careful with your passwords. Now, something I do kind of secretly like here is that I like that 1Password isn't trying to make this service sound more than it is by adding those words. Dark web. Dark web. Dark web. The dark internet. Dark net. The dark web. Into the description, like most other companies are doing. So extra bounty points for that too. And following on from security, there is a feature with other password apps that I've reviewed that allow people to gain access to your account in the event that you are incapacitated. 
apps are like dead or seriously injured. The way it works for those other apps are that you nominate someone who should have access and then specify a delay of how quickly they can take access, which then gives you a chance to reject their request if in fact you aren't dead. But with 1Password, they believe this method is not secure itself because, well, to give others access to your account, they'd need to have access to your account to be able to give others access to your account, if that makes sense, which is a fair point. Now, 1Password deals with this in a more like old school fashion way by issuing with a rescue kit, which essentially is a piece of paper where you write down the secret token, username, password, which you then store away in a safe or give to someone you trust. Then to gain access, this person just enter those encryption keys and details and they're in. There is definitely a whole like security versus convenience thing here, and it's definitely not as convenient as the other apps. But I can't really argue, it definitely is more secure. And we move on to backup and recovery, because have you ever been in those situations where you maybe like change a password and then fast forward a month or two, try to log in and then realize that the password change didn't actually work, but your password software only has the newest version, which means you're now locked out. Well, this happens to me more times than I'd be willing to admit. But with 1Password, you can see previous versions and recover deleted passwords for up to a whole year. So that is a really handy feature as you can just go pull that old password back out again and, uh, and get back into things. And then finally, we come on to support. And on 1Password's own website, it states they have unrivaled support. So I sent a fake email into 1Password support to see how quickly they could come back. Email sent at 3.27 p.m. on Monday the 8th of February. Response and the fix came back on wait for it, Monday the 8th of February at 3.42, a huge 15 minutes later, which is just fantastic. I then also replied back to that email to ask for more information, and then another 30 minutes later, another reply. And this has been consistent with every interaction I've had with 1Password over the years. I'm never left waiting, and, and something I'm actually really, really, really looking forward to, to testing when I do my next round of password comparisons. Pricing-wise, you are looking at $4.99 per month for a family of five, but before shooting this video, I did contact 1Password to ask if there was like any form of discount that I could get for people watching, and they happily provided a link that gets you 25% off a family subscription. So just click on the link down below for that one, or if you are looking for a personal subscription, then again, I'll include the link down below for, I think it's 25% off of that one as well. And so pricing wise, that $4.99 price pre-discount puts you kind of in line with the likes of other password management tools out there. Some may be slightly cheaper, some slightly more, but it's in the ballpark and certainly with that discount code, I think it is well worth it. You can also get a 14 day free trial using that same link. So if you wanna give it a try first before using that discount, then absolutely go nuts. Uh, but yeah, pretty good pricing. And with that discount, I think it makes it like just really good value. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you did and subscribe for more of this kind of content. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.